And tonight we have a very special guest, and his name is Arthur, Advocate Arthur Marara. Let's just put our hands together for them for taking their time to invest in us. Oh, yeah, today we're going to learn so much. Just turn to your neighbor and say, The more you learn, the more you earn. Indeed, the more you learn, the more you earn. Without taking much of your time, ladies and gentlemen, our host this evening is a man who needs no introduction. He is a world class, conf is a world class conference speaker, a medical doctor, a specialist psychiatrist. He is a master holder in medicine as well as master's holder in business administration. Additionally, he is certified human capital development, specializing in leadership and building financial wealth under SMI, which is Success Motivation Institute in Texas, USA. He is a serial entrepreneur owning over a chain of over eight hospitals and medical facilities. He is a marketplace leader, the current GM for Simas Healthcare Group. Dr. S.M. Churisa is a board member of multiple boards. He is also the senior pastor and the founder of Wisdom City Ministries International. He is married to an advocate and together they have four beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure and honor this evening to introduce to you on the podium, Dr. S.M. Churisa. All right. Give me a bit of volume. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Please, you can take your seats. No, no. So just a few remarks as we start our program. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, those who are in the overflow downstairs auditorium, thank you so much. We really love you and appreciate you. We could not fit in this auditorium, and last time it was almost, uh, it was so thick in here, so we decided to use the other auditorium downstairs, which is equally big, and I know that, um, so we will get questions from the overflow as well. Their mic is already connected. They are seeing what we are doing here on the stage, so uh, you are not the only people that are here. The house is almost full, just like this. So we're expecting about a thousand people tonight. And uh, just put your hands together again for yourself. I usually say you are either you are here or you are broke elsewhere. <laughs> so I always say, look, these programs, they take money to put together. So all that you see, it's not free, but it's free but it takes money together. So we want to thank our sponsors who made it happen. Just put your, your hands together for all our sponsors. I'm sure you saw some of them as you are coming in. And, but um, what we can say is that these mentorship classes have been running for over 10 years. This is the 11th year, these mentorship classes running. And I tell you that when we started them 10 years ago, we just started them sitting on a table. Some few young guys came to me and said, Doc, please teach us how we can become business people. And a lot of people have become businesses successful. I can see one seated here, fine dinings. has won awards. Stand, please. <laughs> Tracy, she, she started her business from this. I think next time we'll allow her to just say a few things, what she has learned and how she has started her school and a culinary arts school. And she's now in the US doing a master's in culinary arts. And it's just awesome. So the reason why we are here, we are not entertainers. I'm not comic pastor. <laughs> so I'm not here to make you laugh. I'm here for serious business. But one of the things that I have seen in my life is that I came from a poor background. But one thing is that I didn't like it when I was poor. I like it better now. You, you understand what I'm saying? Wearing a diamond ring, which is equivalent to some of the cars that I saw outside. <laughs> now, I am not saying that kututi baba wa no vaira, but I'm trying to encourage you that it is possible right here in this nation. <laughs> so we are bringing these programs to you so that we can elevate. I grew up in Highfield, for God's sake. Went to Nkumutasa, stayed in Chutungwiza. I don't stay there anymore. But what I want to say is that we are here and we are teaching you the things that we have learned, practical things, 
Okay, so we will not just say things higher. If you want to go higher, you must think higher in Zopi Rep. We're going to give you practical things that you can use so that you can succeed. So my greatest desire is I want to see all of you who are here and in the overflow to succeed. How many people want to succeed? All right. So you are in the right place. And today, as we start, so we were going to have one session. The first session is going to be taken by the person I'm going to introduce. Then we are going to have a switch, a short break, and then I come, then we have question and answer. I love question and answer because we can ask almost anything, not just. But one thing I want to say is we are not a political rally, we are not a political party, we are not a political church, no political questions. We want business and entrepreneurship questions only. Are we together? Hmm? If you ask political questions, we will just take you and take you to ZANU-PF so that you can ask them there. Here it's just business only. Are we together there? All right. Thank you so much. So, let's start this. Um, but before I do that, I need to introduce one person uh, who is my wife. D, can you stand? D, you have to stand. Let them see your face, Excel. Let them see your face. Ah, ah, ah. Huh? So that's D, uh, my wife, and she allows me to do everything that I do. If it was not for her, I would not be here. All right. And so we'll be telling you other programs that we'll be having in, Ma in February relation on, uh, based on relationships and things like that. But for now, let me introduce and read the uh, profile of the person who is coming to take the podium. So the next person you're going to hear is an award-winning lawyer, an attorney, an author of several books. You need to read his books. Business transformation and transformational speaker. This person has spoken in co for corporates on personal development, commanding the stage with so much humor. I'm sure some of you, you know some of you saying, Kwana. Just say to your neighbor, Kwana. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> he's well celebrated everywhere. He's short, but his mind is large and long. <laughs> he is my friend. One and only, Arthur Marara. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. Let's stand up. Let's put our hands together for Arthur, advocate Arthur Marara. You guys are awesome, eh? Wow. Um, what a way to start the year. So thank you so much for coming through. Um, where's the laptop? Yeah. Alec, can, I, can I have it here? All right. So where's Lindani? Lindani, where's Lindani from ZB? All right. Just three minutes. Just come and talk about goal setting. ZB. Ombre Moko ZB. So. One of the things that we've been hearing is many people are saying we need to take this to all the provinces in Zimbabwe. So we're hoping that we'll be doing a tour very soon uh, and just getting to get this message across. Yes. Uh, thank you, Advocate. Right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Lindani Matema. I'm the business acquisition for individuals at ZB Bank. Right, uh, being an entrepreneur uh, is not an easy task. You know, building a business from the ground up takes some immense amount of dedication and planning. And that's why goal setting is so important. Uh, with goal setting, entrepreneurs can develop a clear vision for their business. They can stay organized plan for the future, and monitor their progress. Uh, so goal setting is a critical tool when it comes to achieving success. There's, a, there's one writer who always says, entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people want, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. So it's all about hard work, focus, and determination. 
So setting and striving uh, to reach goals is very, very important for an entrepreneur. And the key to doing this is having a positive focus. So one of the first tips for setting goals as an entrepreneur is to make sure that your goals are specific. Uh, you might want to achieve something, but if it's not specific, it will be very difficult for you to set those goals. Having a general idea is not enough. Your goal should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Additionally, it's important to think long-term. You, know? uh, you, should, you should not think short-term when you're setting your goals. Consider what your business goals are, then break them down into short, achievable chunks. This way, each goal you set will help you towards your long-term vision. So just to give you uh, examples how goals can assist your, you and your business, uh, they can give you a clear vision and focus. They can motivate you and give you some drive towards achieving the set target. Uh, setting goals keeps you accountable. You know, if you set a goal that you want to buy a car in 2023, and uh, by year end you haven't achieved that, it means that uh, you've not met your target. So you have to be accountable to the goals that you would have set. Uh, these goals can help you measure your performance. You know, if you set a target that by such and such a time I want to achieve this, and you then realize that you haven't achieved it, it means that you haven't achieved your goal. So a goal can help you to measure your, 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 your performance. Then goal setting can also provide you with a set of criteria to see if your business is succeeding. You know, you, you have to have some, some key deliverables in terms of your goals. So uh, lastly, I know Mr. Arthur said I shouldn't talk about, about ZB, <laughs> but I'll, I'll just, I'm just tempted to say that um, at ZB, our purpose is to improve lives. Um, and our mission is to work hard every day to create happy people. You know, as part of our business, it's our responsibility to give you guys financial advice. It's our responsibility to help you to meet your goals and to achieve your dreams. You know, goals of a business can include quite a lot. Some, they want growth. Some want customer satisfaction. Some want, want to improve their uh, business quality. Some want to increase their productivity. The list is endless. You know, so uh, at ZB, we are a sustainable and reliable partner you can trust. We will be there for you at every stage until you reach that level where you envision yourself to be. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Uh, all right. Am I audible with this? It runs well. All right, it's fine. All right, so. We want to do three things today. Is that okay? Number one, we want to inspire each other. Is that okay? Yes. So one of the things that you need to realize quite often in life is look at the people who are surrounding you. If they're not encouraging you, you don't have a network, you've got a cage. Are you with me? That's why in 2023, one of the things that you need to do is to constantly assess who is in your life because they can either stretch you or they can shrink you. So we want to inspire each other. Number two, we want to inform each other. That's why I believe we need to constantly be working on the type of information that we introduce in our minds. Because I believe information brings about transformation. What you constantly fix your mind on is very important because it shapes the direction that your life goes on. But ultimately, the purpose of tonight is to help each other to improve ourselves. And the good news about improving yourself is no one is coming to change your life. No one is charming to improve your life. So, I'm a lawyer by profession. I think you've heard about that. I, like what Dr. was saying, I lost my father when I was 18 years of age. And one of the things that I've been so passionate about is to challenge people to realize that you're not a product of your past. You are what you choose to be. You are not a product of a failed relationship. You're not a product of a failed background. You are what you decide to be. And this is one of the best decisions that I've ever made just to come and to learn. I think we need to give Dr. Teresa a round of applause for organizing such a wonderful event. So, we're talking about this in uh, 2022, and I'm, I'm so excited that 
this particular goal is actually manifested and has come to, to pass. So we need to be able to do that. So I'm going to take you through a conversation that I think is very important for every entrepreneur, why we need to invest in our branding. And I'm going to talk so much about something called personal branding. And I want to start with a very simple example. Why do we need to invest in personal brands? Because people buy brands. People are comfortable around brands. Why is it in Zimbabwe, what someone with a Louis Vuitton, Ashiburu Gamgombi? Vanodama brands. Why is it Munane Gucci, Asaruburu Gamushika Shika? Vanodama brands. Hello? People want to associate with brands. That's why someone with fake Gucci, fake Louis Vuitton, nowadays going to Zambia, and going to Louis Vuitton, Gucci, everything, Zripo. So, why is it people go to those lengths to buy counterfeits? Because people want to associate with big brands. So, one thing that we need to deliberately invest in as entrepreneurs is how can we grow our brands and how can we develop ourselves? The moment you begin to develop yourself as an entrepreneur, the moment you begin to develop your brands, you also begin to create revenue. And one of the simple examples that I give people, usually I don't know Why? Because they know their brands. And I want us to get a point where we develop a brand that can never be negotiated on value. I hear many people saying, hey, price, blah, 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 blah. You know, the moment you begin to develop your value, develop your brand, price should never be an issue. So how do we develop a personal brand? I want to give you what I call the seven laws of personal branding, but let me put a bit of context. I want to start with some few images. I think you know these common brands. I think this, this, this brand. Runs Jim. All right. So this brand developed itself to an extent that everyone, I you know, they to I don't know, Hello? So, I got no bad time with brand, Bali House, Chi Chi, but people say, what about Chi? Zoe. So, my Zoe has become a generic name for everything to be concentrated, that is to be diluted. All right, another example. Hello? Are you saying that? So, Colgate grew itself, developed itself to an extent that. Colgate became a generic name for toothpaste. So someone is holding Aquafresh. They say Agabadaji. So Colgate is really benefited from us marketing Colgate. Why? Because they invested in their brand, they developed their brand up to a level where everyone thinks that anything to do with teeth is called. So whatever that should do, you need to develop a Colgate brand. Beat my putty, Colgate level. Eo. So, Vim. So, anything to do, no question, scouring and so forth. These guys develop themselves to an extent that anything that has to do with scouring is called what? So, I grew up in Mashingo. Some white surface ever from Kunana uh, Bigita Minerals and so forth. So they used to say, Vim. That's the power of a brand. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? That's branding. So Cobra becomes a generic name for anything to do with flaws. And you need to develop yourself, you need to develop your brand to the extent that it becomes the generic name for whatever that you represent. And the good news, Cobra was not always Cobra, they started from somewhere. Which is why one of the things that we need to constantly encourage each other is we need to be ready to start. You never develop a brand until you start. Start small. Ah, you know this brand? By the way, SAF rebranded to OMO. But Muzimabu, anything she watch, she don't see. Hello? Uh, so, Agabada Boom, Agabada G, SAF. 
iri ndora zo abizo even in the name of corruption siyo mari koko yada otinga mamba anizo siyechi koko so coca cola deliberately invested in their brands to an extent that anything that will quench your thirst we call it coke and coca cola was established in 1886 by a pharmacist called john pemberton in 1886 this is a time when zimbabwe was still independent but fast forward history this company called coca cola they make more money in a year than all of us in Zimbabwe, including our Mbingas combined. Cook. Mama is You know what So anything that's a dairy juice, we call it she? Talk about the power of brands. The question that I want to ask you tonight, what makes you stand out? You make your money, you thrive, you succeed by being able to establish and identify what makes you stand out. In, in other words, the world is not going to look for you and reward you for you to be like everyone else. The world is going to look for you because there is something about you and about your business that stands out. So I'll tell you one thing. There are so many churches in Zimbabwe, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm sad mambo mpinda mshesha kana kose. Standing out. What makes you stand out? So your success lies in the ability to be able to distinguish yourself from the rest. That's branding. So at a certain point in time, people started emulating Coca-Cola. They started making bottles that were more or less the same with Coca-Cola. And this is the reason why they created something called a contour bottle. Why? Because they wanted their product to stand out. And that contour bottle is over 100 years old. And this is the question that I want to ask all of us. What makes you? All right. I'm going to give you a case study on what I think symbolizes personal branding. And I'm going to take you to the Old Testament. I'm not preaching, by the way. Verse 40, now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul and the Lord had sent a tormenting spirit that filled with him with depression and fear. Meaning you, don't, you can't afford the spirit of the Lord leaving you because something will replace. And that's called depression, that's called fear. And I want you to notice one thing, verse 14 is a problem that is being created. By the way, entrepreneurs exist to deal with problems and entrepreneurship by definition is simply solving problems for a fee. Are you with me? Solving problems for a fee. Meaning, if you are joining the people who are describing problems, complaining about problems, you are not an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs get excited when they hear problems being mentioned because they are thinking about solutions. So, verse 14, there is a problem. A king is in trouble. And I want you to notice what happens on verse 15. The writer of First Samuel says, Some, tell your neighbor, some. And some is really a very interesting word because it means there is actually an opposite of some. So we've got dozens and dozens of souls, servants, but it's only some. Talk about standing out, by the way. Stand out. Some of souls, servants say to him, a tormenting spirit from the Lord is troubling you. Verse 15, meaning it's very important to be able to surround yourself with people who are able to actually diagnose a problem. A number of us, we surround ourselves with people who can't even tell what's happening in our lives. They are clueless. You have got a problem in your business. You surround yourself with people who don't even know what's happening. So Psalm of Saul 7 says, a tormenting spirit from the Lord is troubling you. And I want to look at verse 16. 14 is a problem. 15 is a solution. 14 is a problem. 15, they diagnose the problem. 16 is very interesting. They're actually coming up with a solution. I sing it. And this is the solution. Let us find a what? Let us find a what? Good. They did not say, let us find a musician. Hello? I'm going to answer, let us find a she. Because my musicians are going to wonder. Terry, I read your weekend is in the house today. Weekend. Some go on board and be wrong. Some go on board. Yeah. 
Let us find a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. You'll play soothing music. And you'll soon be well again. Verse 16, solution has been provided. And I want you to notice one thing that happens. Verse 17, a post is created. I think it. A post is created. So he's saying, okay, find me someone who plays what? Find me someone who plays well. Meaning there is always a vacancy and there are always opportunities for people who play well. And verse 17 is very interesting because ordinarily this is the time when we're supposed to put adverts, is it? HR people, Mrimo. Uh, applications are being invited from suitably qualified persons to meet a newly arisen post of a person of a musician, good musician. Uh, applications can be sent through via email, blah, 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 and so forth. But I want you to look at what happens on verse 17. After the position has been created, and the question that I'm asking you is what makes you stand out? Verse 18, I want you to look at this. One of the seven said to Saul, one of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem. I want you to look at something. This particular person who is called one of... Uh, a soul servant does not even know the name of Jesus, and I sing it. Which is why I always tell people, you don't necessarily need to have people know your name. They need to know what you're good at. Once people get to know what you're good at, they will look for you. They will look for your number. Why? Because people are ready to create a road to excellence. So let us find this person. One of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented up player. I sing it. Not only that, He's a brave warrior, a man of war, and is a good judgment. He's also a fine-looking young man, and the Lord is with him. And I want you to notice about something about verse 18. This is someone who is describing someone who is not even there. Hello? Someone is describing a CV, a Munwadi, a Sipo. They don't even know the name, but they know what this young man is good at. Which is the question that I'm asking you. What makes you stand out? So many lawyers in town, so many doctors in town, so many musicians in town, so many accountants in town, so many people selling chicken in town. What makes you stand out? And let me give you the seven laws. First question, who is talking about you? Guys, you should be worried about my levels and that was that I go. Zimen Zimbo, no go tower on the earth, Zurira Maharosana Saint. Who's talking about you? And question number two. In the point that I want to stress, I also hear on the end of and so forth. The message is It's a good sign, it means you're alive. That's why Oscar Wilde says there was only one thing in life worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. By the way, contracts are awarded in your absence, decisions are made in your absence. Because somebody is talking about you. So who is talking about you? And the next question that I want to ask you is what do people say about you in your absence? That's branding. What do they say about you? So a brand by definition is simply what people say about you or your product in your absence. In other words, you package yourself in such a way that you don't have to convince people. Are you with me? You package yourself in such a way that your product, your service, your business speaks for yourself. I want to start with a very important principle on personal excellence. Personal excellence. You want to build an effective brand Whatever that you do, build it on personal excellence. And the point there is excellence opens doors. And I want to stress a point. You don't wake up and become accidentally excellent. You deliberately make a choice that I want to be a person of. So I usually want to encourage people that it doesn't matter the assignment. No matter how small it is, learn to do it excellently. You don't know who is going to come into contact with your work. You don't know who is going to come into contact with your business. You don't know who is going to come into contact with how you are doing your things. That's why you need to deliberately invest in excellence. That's why I want to challenge everybody to 
commit to a level of responsibility. You are the person who is supposed to set the higher standards. Time is not going to allow me to take you every time. I usually share this story, so I'm going to skip it. And I'm going to take you to the next principles. I want to look at this brand, Mercedes. Mercedes, it's a status symbol. Apana status can only be in the road. Aguna, yato zano tichi, kwa na temchi, kwa na. Brand Eero, are now gods, are three gods, we passport muti, are you with me? Because this particular brand, there is a reason why they charge what they charge. Hello? Because they understand excellence and allow their signature. Their signature says, we are going to commit to give you the best or nothing. So if we're not going to give you our best, we're going to do nothing. And this is the standard that I want us to live with. We're going to commit to give you the best or That's the reason why you can talk to Zimoko. I want to bring down a Russian's rapid name one of my bands, be now one of my bands. Ah, 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 ah. Munuava no Mzira. They know their customer. And they know their customer ask with a noise nabas. They know their customer ask with a live on Facebook. They know their customer ask with a tweet magua. They know their customer ask with a payment plan. Hello. The best or nothing. I like what they say. For us, the three-pointed star doesn't just identify a Mercedes Benz. It represents everything that we stand for, everything we've ever done, and everything we'll ever do. But more importantly, it always represents our promise to deliver the best or nothing. Standard of excellence. If you're going to do cakes, standard of excellence. If you're going to do chickens, standard of excellence. If you're going to do consultancy, standards of excellence. If you're going to do church, doc, I love what you're doing, standard of excellence. So right now as we're speaking, there is an overflow facility down there. It's amazing. It's amazing. You'll love it. Do you know why? Because there's a spirit of excellence. I want you to make excellence a lifestyle. Make excellence a lifestyle. And once you make excellence a lifestyle, guess what? You begin to position yourself for money, which is why I've been trying to tell people, guys, if you're praying for money, you're praying for the wrong thing. Put in the system, money becomes a result. Put in excellence, money becomes a result. That's why the philosopher Aristotle says we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act but a habit. Dog does with, deal with addictions. So once something becomes a habit, it simply means it's an acquired pattern of behavior. That becomes normal by virtue of repetition. So once you repeatedly do excellence, it becomes a habit. Meaning the next time you want to do it, excellence becomes a default. That's what I want you to take time What's going to make you stand out is excellence. What's going to make you stand out is not you fighting for attention. No, distinguish yourself. Once you distinguish yourself like the diamonds, excellence. I, I watched a series called Marco Polo, and there's a character called Sifu, very interesting character and was describing what he calls Kung Fu. He says Kung Fu is not the fighting. He says it means it's a supreme skill from hard work. A great poet has reached Kung Fu, the panther, whatever, 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 whatever. But most importantly, you need to strive to a level where you attain supreme skill mastery in whatever area. That's where your value comes from. So I want you to normalize that. And I want you to look at what happens on verse 16. Remember this guy, verse 19. This guy who is describing this guy doesn't even know his name. He simply knows what makes him stand out. Are you saying it? And I want you to see what happens on verse 19. Verse 19 is very interesting. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse to say, send me your son who? David, the shepherd. 
I want you to look at this. So from verse 18, they like what they heard. They already commissioned people to look for this person. Guys, don't worry about competition. Become your best. Distinguish yourself. Don't invest in fighting competition. Fight to improve yourself. And once you improve yourself, the world is going to create a road to where you are. Now, find me David. And I want you to look at 21. So David went to Saul and began saving him. And I want you to see what's happening. Saul loved David very much. And David became his armor bearer. So this guy is supposed to go and play music. He goes and saves until they realize, no, this guy is not just for music. The way this guy executes, this guy, mm-mm. How's my music, man? I want this guy close. This should be my personal assistant. Now, excellence is responsible for someone being promoted. And I want you to know what happens with this particular story. If you go on 22, then Saul sent word to Jesse, asking, please, let David remain in my service. For I'm very pleased with him. I sing it. I'm very pleased with him. I want to notice one thing. There are people right now who are praying for job security. Then there are people who are actually being sought with job security. Some people are praying for promotion. Some are being sought with promotion. Excellence. From a musician to a PA to a permanent position. And I want you to notice one thing. The moment you understand the importance of excellence, you begin to understand that doors will ordinarily open for you. The way you dress, excellent. The way you cook, excellent. The way you walk, excellent. Guys, let me help you. Can I also think I'm married as an entrepreneur? Tango would describe by Namokma strangers. Are you with me? Should he say, mm, I'm not going to go to the people are comfortable giving money to people with money that's why banks never give poor people money they demand collateral excellence since I mean Maui, I got to put a name. I couldn't have an army rise also. Excellence. So I want you to learn to package yourself, package yourself, and position yourself through excellence. If you're going for a pitch, prepare. If you're going for whatever, prepare and put in the time. So no one should know that you're struggling. No. Don't dress like your problems. Are you with me? Dress like your future. Someone will take food somewhere. It might deliver. It's not delivered. 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 It's not I like what John Deary says. I'm going to conclude on this first principle. John Deary, the guy with the tractors. So pretty much... What John Deary wanted to do was to be able to come up with a machinery that was going to suit various soul types. And he said something that I think I liked about him. And I'm going to close on this point. He says, I will never put my name on a product that doesn't have in it the best that is in me. So as long as the best in me is not coming out, I'm not going to sign it. Set a standard of excellence. Sit down with your team. Make excellence normal. Sit down with yourself. Make excellence normal. And that's what I want to challenge you. You want to make more money in 2023, become a person of excellence. You want to venture into new territories, become a person of excellence. You want to grow your business, become a person of excellence. If you ever noticed, not because I don't know, I know Shanda, 
Excellence. Excellence opens doors. And I'm challenging you. What makes you stand out? It's been a great honor speaking to you. We'll be coming back. Question and answer. God bless you guys. Thanks so much. Eh? Shall we continue? Everybody says, say, ish. All right. All right. So my name is Dr. Chirisa. Um, to those who are not here, when the MC gave the introduction, I'm a medical doctor by profession. I'm a specialist psychiatrist, a serial entrepreneur, uh, multiple businesses in the ghetto, in the northern, everywhere, and uh, in the marketplace. I'm the current GM of Simas Healthcare, uh, where I'm part of that executive team. I'm also the senior pastor of this church. So you are in our church, Wisdom City Ministries. Thank you so much. And I hope you, you will find our hospitality. We are trying, we are trying. We, we already have two services in this place because we can't fit. We are building our own auditorium, a 3,000 seater. We hope then we'll be able to host you without the pain that we currently have. All right, okay. I think it's, it's, it's full here. I don't know what you're gonna do. I think some can squeeze there. My security guys were saying that we've got a situation. It's sorted now? For now. All right. Shall we continue? All right, so let's focus on this now so that we can finish on time. We need to go to our question and answer time where we give enough time and you can ask any question, non-political and uh, in a decent manner. So I'm going to be talking to you today on the money mindset. Everybody say money. Somebody is not talking, say money. money. Mindset. Money. Now, the reason why you need to have a money mindset as an entrepreneur is that you are in business to make money. You know, when, when I went to medical school, you know, we were being asked, why are you in medical school? And, and, and I heard others, I like to help people. Uh, I like, I, I, I saw a kid, and when I was asked, I said, I want to make money. You know, so I was just shocked. Why would anybody do a hard degree for five years, seven years, just, 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 I know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing, boss. I want to make money. You know, so I'm in business to make money. I'm, I'm not an NGO. I'm, I'm, even the NGOs and, uh, are NGOs to make money. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, but for you to attract money, you need to have the right mindset about money. Because if you don't have the right mindset about money, you will repel money. Money will not come to you. Money will run away from you. I always say to people that money has got ears. Money has got feelings. Money is like something, is, is, is like I always tell somebody that money, you must, you must charm money. Imagine you've got a girlfriend. You know, when I was courting D almost 18, 20 years ago, I didn't say, ah, I don't like you, and you don't make me happy. That's what some of you are saying about money. Huh? And money, because money doesn't make you happy. If you were my wife, I would say you don't know where to shop. You know what I'm saying? Now, now money is not everything, but I put it somewhere up there with oxygen, God, oxygen, money. <laughs> if you trivialize money, you will be in trouble. If you make it unimportant in your life, you will be in trouble. In fact, you would have put your whole tribe to misery, your, all, your whole kids to misery. And so in this, I was about to say church, but in this church, we, don't, we never say, I, we don't like money. We like money. And that's why money like us. Because we speak to it right. You say you make us feel good. You make me look good. Mm? If I don't have you, I go, mm. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I have got money in my pocket, I feel so good. I walk with, with a swag. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Money is good. Everybody say money, money. is good. Is good. Oh, yes. So I'm going to teach you about money mindset. There's something that you need to understand the mindset of utilization of money. And so the way you use money determines which class you are. It's not the amount of money that you have because if you've got the right mindset, it's a matter of time you will have the money of that class. So that's the reason why when I meet rich people, and you're going to see a lot of rich people and a lot of successful people come into this mentorship class. Next month, we are going to have the owner and the CEO of Igulina, Alex. He's going to be here and he's going to be, and he's going to be talking here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, 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 so what, the reason why I don't ask money from rich people, I'm now, I'm now giving you a tip. When you see us, don't ask money from us. Ask for our minds. Because when you have the mind, money will follow. So the reason why I'm teaching you how to utilize money is if you utilize money like a poor man or in the poor class, you will remain in that class. So you need to start to manage your money and utilize it like the rich people do so that you start to become rich. So poor people, they just pay bills. It's end of month. All your money is ending on paying bills. In fact, there's more month at the end of the month than your money. Some of your money is already finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before the month is finished. Middle class, they earn a, a bit of money. And what they do is they just buy things. So they'll buy the phone. They buy, we've got the, the rich people have got the phones. But we've got the toys. We've got the Jaguars. We, we've, got, we've got the Range Rovers. We've got the nice houses. We've got those things. But we didn't buy them with our money. I don't buy things and toys with my money because my income is divided into aggressive income, which I produce. I never use that money. I never use my sweat. I use the babies that come from the money. So rich people assign their money invest their money. So when you see me going for a holiday, posting on the YouTube, posting on, my, on, on the yacht in Dubai, and da 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 don't say uh, uh, I'm eating my money. No, I don't eat my money. I eat the money that my money would have created. So poor people don't even have the money to eat. Middle class people eat the money. So all their salary goes to shoes. All their salary, and they are left with nothing. Rich people, they earn money. Before they use it, they assign it to make more money for them. The profit that comes from there, that's what I used to do to pay the toys. You see the difference? So while you eat your money, you buy the toy, and now it's, it's, it's over, you are broke. I can't be broke because my money will continuously create more money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can you see the difference between you and me? All right. <laughs> so I want you to come to the rich class. You, from today, you never use your money that you would have sweated. Wakwira buzz, wafamba, mariova. No, 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 no. You assign it to a business first. The profit you can eat. You can eat anyone. You can buy the nice things. You can buy the Gucci. You can buy whatever belt. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But you don't use your sweat. Your sweat is for investment. Are we clear? Say, I hear you. Amen. All right, all right. Let's go. Let's go to the next thing. This thing has stopped working. Ah. Why? 
What should you know about money? Money making is not easy. Whoever told you that making money is easy lied to you. Whoever told you that making, becoming an entrepreneur is, is easy lied to you. Let me tell you about it. It's a lie. It's not easy. It's hard. It's what? Tell your neighbor, being an entrepreneur is hard. But if you make it, it's good. You understand what I'm saying? So making money is hard. It, you're going to take risks. It takes courage. You have to decide and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. The first business that I, I owned, I owned it when I was in university. When I was 21, I was doing third year medicine. The money that we were getting was not going to be enough. So you know what? I just took all the money and bought a PA system. So I bought a disco system, and, that was the, and I was left with no money. And I said, now I start to look for gigs to go and play. And I was playing at churches, conferences, what, what. I was hiring until I had a crew of three people, three groups of people from one system. But when I did that, all the people said, Uchafan and Zara. And I took the risk. And I started to make more money than my parents during that time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you taking the risks? Are you doing what it takes? Do you have the courage to make money? Keeping money is different from making money. We have all seen the Goda phenomena. We are also seeing the lithium phenomena. We are, and we are going to see the burning phenomena because the laws of making money are different from the laws of keeping money. In fact, the easiest thing about money is making it. It's harder to keep it. It's even harder to grow it. That's why I can say, I can give you $1,000 and say, double it, we're not going to go because multiplying it is a different thinking. You, you understand what I'm saying? So you need to understand that keeping money is going to take discipline, is going to set, take soberness. With some of us, you never know whether I've, whether I've got no money or not. You can't tell. Because I don't change my dressing. I don't change the way I walk. I don't change. You know somebody, I can put a thousand names. It's what somebody said. Try to say no. As a jamba jamba so. Faza. Kota kazo kupa mita uneta say. Uno fenda ewe, uno fenda. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of us will have handles large sums of money and you will never know. You will never know. Even when I've got more money, I actually go home and be sober. I'll be, I'm more sober when I've got money. You understand? Because keeping money needs your mind to be sober and to have discipline. Growing money now, it takes you to have knowledge. Whenever you cannot grow something, whether it's a business, whether you cannot grow yourself, your muscles cannot grow anything, it means you are lacking knowledge. You are lacking what? Knowledge. You are lacking financial wisdom. You are working financial intelligence. Now, there might be some people who are scholars here I saw some, somebody getting 50 points at A level. I said, wow. I don't know whether it's being a genius or it's, being, it's foolishness. Now, some of you might say, ah, doctor saying that. I, I had my own three points. Pa. Uh, no, not three points. Three A's. So I know what it is. Kugona. I was given a book prize at UZ. I'm, I'm, I'm not down. Honestly, if you can't say a person who is the pastor of this church is down. Ah. And you can walk up in this room and say, ah, this pastor is down. Me? Ah, uh, no. But what I realized is this. For you to grow something, you need to understand the intricacies. And, 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 and Marare just told us one of those secrets of excellence. I always tell people, there is no job shortage in Zimbabwe. There's just people who are not qualified for the job. 
Some of us who have not even put our CVs, I don't even know what the CV is. I don't go to interviews. I go to job placements where I'm said, look, this is the job you are giving you. Because there's no competition. Because I decided a long time ago that I would be the best in my field. I would be the best. Now I'm doing psychiatry. Sometimes you know white people, they don't want to, to come to us. But they do. Because they've got no choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even when they go to their white brothers and say, now we need this problem it's fixed, they will tell them, go to Dr. Chiris. And do charger. <laughs> do charger, cha iso. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm just telling you about the money mindset. Let's move. I call this my money philosophy. My money what? With all the money that you earn right now, no matter how little it is, if you are spending it all on bills, you are a fool. Say to your neighbor, I think the pastor is talking to you now. <laughs> now somebody's saying, hey, the man I kwane, hey, I kwane, issue man, saka ichipera. No. If you are finishing all the money that you are getting, you are a fool. Because how are you going to get ahead? So you have to apply the money philosophy. Of all the money that you get, 70% goes to your living expenses. I don't care what you do in those living expenses, whether you are living fly, high, whatever, do whatever you do. But 10% must go, to, must go away from you to help other people. So me and my wife, we've got a foundation called the Dogas Foundation. She's called Dogas. So we help people pay school fees, university, primary, da 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 da. We do all those kind of things. We have, in the past 10 years, we have sent so many people to school, some to master's level. Now, I'm not saying give me your applications. <laughs> I, I, I choose the ones that I want. You understand what I'm saying? I've got my own method. But we give. 10% must go to debt reduction. One is square it, my own thing. I'm going to be a one square it. Phones, this is the number you say. Ah, around the net, around the net. But on the net, I can't know, man. Quit a rumbo, you must say. But I'm not square it, man. Am I talking to somebody? So you must put a systematic way. I always teach that can only square it. Don't run away from it. Be the first one to go to the van. So square it. Well, but guys, I cannot pay Marie $100 here, but I can pay $25. Over the do that, Marie, but it's better to pay $25 than to go to the coop. So I choose what I say. But approach people that you owe. Don't run away from them. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? All right. And the other one, you do investment. You must invest, which means every month there must be something that you invest your money into. All right. Now, let's go and look and say, what do you invest into? So that 10%, oh, you, you guys cannot see that, isn't it? I call it the 30, 30, 30, 10 rule. 10% of what you invest to, you invest into savings, you put some money aside. COVID exposed you. The last paycheck you got, you were already poor. You were crying and saying, God for, uh, God, uh, 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 God for, uh, for second you. And right now, because there's no COVID, you have already forgotten. And you are back to your normal utilization of funds. You need to be putting money aside. And in this church, we say that you must have six months of expensive uh, saved away as cash. As what? Me and my wife, you've got three years. How many? Three. So I can stop working today and, you, uh, and, and, and I will not change. And why, do we, why we say six months? Because something would have happened in six months. 
But if you've got zero, nothing will happen in six months. You'll go to 12 years or 12 months. Who knows what I'm talking about? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you need to have what? Some money. So every month, you must put some money that you save. I've been doing that saving money every month. It's the first thing that I do. If you read the book called uh, uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, it talks about paying yourself first. That's paying yourself first. You put some money away, you don't use it. It's not to help your friend, it's not to help your mother, it's not to bury your uncle. If people in our, in our, in our tribe, I don't even get that money which I've saved. Hmm. Manje Tweta say, ah, Manje Tweta say. Did you just say, I see a Joso. I see a good farama one. I hear him say, Deyangu. Kuitrama Kanama one. Angu is that say, because listen to this, money comes in seasons. There's a seven year of plenty, seven years of lack. If you don't prepare the seven years of plenty, when, uh, of, of, of lack when you are in the plenty, when the season comes, you will cry. And a lot of people have cried, and I'm telling you now that you, are, you have to save some money. You need to be having some money that is liquid. Number two, you are going to have to put, you are going to have to invest 30% of that money either into yourself. I'm, I'm also going to say how you invest that money. Okay? So if you are earning, and I will say it, I know the last time I said it, and people have got bonga. If you are earning 10,000, Less than 10,000 a month. US dollars, not bond. You are not yet any. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. The problem is that the poor, the poor compare themselves with the poor. Do you know that if you go to America, you are considered poor if you earn 24,000 a month, you are in the poor class. If you earn 24,000 here in Zimbabwe, you are the mbinga. No, you are poor. You are the better poor, but you are poor. Hello? You are considered rich in the world when you earn 100,000 US dollars per year, which is $8,333.33. Per month. So why I'm saying this, I'm trying to give you a global perspective. Because the world has become a global village. And it gives you to know that you must work hard. Don't be satisfied with 2.5 and say, I need to get a flat, I to get a say. I can, I, I, it, it can't even buy a ticket re, 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 re business class. To Johannesburg, you can't, it can't, your salary can't. <laughs> and you will go to Bamba. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Yes. We must invest in ourselves until we make real money. Am I talking to somebody? You must invest in your business until your business is now churning money. How many people this year have invested in their business? This year. Just a few people. This year I've invested hun almost 100,000 into our business. In January alone. Bought a new digital x-ray machine, bought the equipment, renovating hundreds of, we are, we are putting, because we want more money. What have you invested in? Which book have you bought about money? How many books have you read? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many courses have you gone to? After he's starting a mentorship class, a private one, so it's paid. Urungoda Shemar. Now let me tell you something. There is wisdom that we give for free. Then there's another level of wisdom that we give when it's paid for. So I divide my, my money, cash, passive income, real estate, and my own business. 
So every month, I'm investing in my own business or myself. I'm investing into properties every month. I'm investing into cash every month. So I call it the bucket system. I've got a bucket of cash, a bucket of land, a bucket of equities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't even have a bucket. Okay, let's move. Your fun money, the money that you use to take your girl out, to, to do whatever you want to do, to, to do all those things, you don't use aggressive money. The purpose of aggressive money, you put it into a business so that it starts to give you money. Am I talking to somebody? All right. You should use money that comes from profits, rents, dividends, interests. That should pay for your toys, your big TVs, your big cars, your holidays, your Gucci, your Louis Vuitton. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is somebody getting a money mindset here? Okay. If you don't have, don't use it. So years ago, when I was building my business, I did not stay in a very posh place. I was staying in Chitungus. And I was building my business. People said, why are you going to Chitungus? No, because my rents are cheap. And I was using the, the lowered rents to put money into my business. Now, my business, after it had grown, it built me a house. Now, you know when people are building a house in Africa, it doesn't get shaved. Ah. <laughs> so, so, I first put my, I first built my business. Then my business started to build me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hello? So my, the business then started to build a house. Pa. Two and a half years. A 750 house, pa, cash. Sorry, ZB, you, you, you didn't give me a loan. You get what I'm saying? But 750, cash, pa. That, 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 motor, same business, pa. Yamadam, pa. Vana, got the cheese, Vana, go, go, go. Go in the school, say, say, so, pa. You know, there are schools in Zimbabwe where the kids are kind of watching, we are kumba, one way and in So my wife was at the airport today picking the kids. In Zimbabwe, yes. When you are investing, Try to formalize early. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Don't just run. Have a company. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that at least things can, there can be a track record. Banks are not going to give you and you don't even have a company. They want money where you are depositing so that they can see something is happening. You must have proof of activity. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? So you must, and you must have it early, have a company, a registered company. Open a bank account. Even if you are not using it, put some money there and take it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Let them see some activity. But I always say you need to have, and to those who are now in business, you need to have a company because if something goes wrong in that company, they will not come for you as a person because your, your company is a persona. So in and on your limited liability, it's not pay right coco. You understand what I'm saying? They will not pierce what is called the corporate veil and come behind and see me. They will see my company. So Because Kumba is a different what? Person. But most of you are so traded. When your business is on fire, Kumba is on fire. All right. I'm telling you the money mindset of what we use us is used to the, the rich. Leverage. 
I don't borrow money to consume. Some of you, you borrow money. I've seen people borrow money, $1,000, that younger business. When they get the business from ZB, the thousand, do you know what they do? He goes and buys a new, a new suit. And I'm 850. Kumba kwa ngongo sana mafuta ati enga nika grocery. Madam, zaa padara, zaa zaa zoeita. Ati enga kama kwa 200. Blazu ya arugu na uti no kumba ukuruku fry wap. That's what it's saying. Abadar. By the time he wants to put money into his business, he's left with three hundred dollars, and it's no longer enough for that business. So one thing is this: I never borrow to consume. When I'm borrowing. I borrow to put in the business so that I can create money. Most of you, most of your borrowings, slippers. Not everything that is being you should you shouldn't buy. If you're an entrepreneur, let the non-entrepreneurs who are not here buy. But you don't buy. Don't go into debt for things that is not improving your business and improving your money. Am I talking to somebody? I only borrow to buy assets and not toys. And when I borrow, I make sure that it must pay itself on its own. I put it into something and make sure that it's paying on its own. You, need, you, you start to need to have a money mindset. Let me tell you one of the things that I did. So a few years ago, I went into, uh, I got a house, Milton Park, one of, it was my rooms, the way my rooms were, I would see patients. So the rent was 1,500. So what I did, I said, I don't need this whole building. So I paid the 1,000, paid the deposit. Then I looked for people to come and and I, I, and I gave them each one room, 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 room. I calculated to, and to ensure that after all those people come in, I no longer pay rent, I'm left with 400 profits. Money mindset. I am looking at how I can make money. Why are you paying rent at your own house? You've got some rooms, I can go kill. Why are you having this big shop which is useless? Are you sleeping in your shop? Get people into that shop who pay rent and you, you have no pay, no, no rent. You must think on how you can use everything at your disposal to make money. You are not using your brain. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. I want to ensure that I don't lose money. I don't use my money for anything. So when you see me, I'm there. Four years, three years. Imagine going to Milton Park, not paying any rent, zero rent. Even if I don't pay rent, I don't get any profit. I've just given you some of you an idea. Just look for an office. Find people and put them in a room. 300, 400. What was the rent? What was the rent? What was the rent? Even if you we office. What will create an asset in a positive cash flow? Huh? As you did, Gomez. So, Dr. Fung. Okay, let me do this and then we close. I call this the wealth triangle. It was started by one guy in Canada. I like it. If you are earning less than 10,000, and I'll put 10,000. Because you, you, you understand why. Because if you want to become a millionaire, you cannot be investing $200, $200. You can start there, but you have to earn. So if you earn any amount less than that, you must focus, you must first invest in yourself and, and get what I call high income skills. The reason why it's easier for me and, and advocate is we've got high income skills. I've got skills that bring money to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there is a business called 
Dr. SM Chirisa Private Limited. You are also a business. You are a private limited. How much money are you bringing as you? So I took time investing in me in a skill that can make me money. Some of you have got land. Why can't you go and learn a skill? I've got a young man who comes to this church. He's my personal trainer. And I said to him, he said, ah, my pastor, my man, I saw Kwana, you can make it to Kwana. No, I didn't know Kwana said, invest in yourself. He said, oh, I can do a project. I said, do you know the project? Then I said, before you start the project, go and learn how to do uh, 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 the pigard. So he went with his wife. I said, take your wife so that when you are doing it, she, she doesn't say, I'm so sorry to look at my son. Hey, you're neglecting me. I'm going to go to You get what I'm saying? So they went there and they invested money and they got a skill on how to rear the pigs. They got their first four pigs for 1.2, which were safest. After three months, they gave birth. Each one gave 10, 10, 10. Two died of a sudden eight, eight times four, one and 32. After another three months, serviced again, Zane 62. He's selling his first batch Munamach of fully grown one in it for $450. He's just changed his life by a high income skill. And there you are. Invest in yourself. What have you learned that can bring money to you? You must focus on your business. And you must be investing always. So before I eat my money, I make sure that it invests. Ask my wife, I invest. I've got money coming from, I don't know how many streams of income I have. I probably have got 14 or 15. Money hits my account every day. Now, don't come and borrow. Ask these people, we don't give money, we give advice. Because my advice is more than the 300 that I'll give you. It will change your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So this money is not to, it's, for, it's for me and my wife and my, and my children. Don't say adopt me. I'm not adopting any. <laughs> All right. Let me say this, then close. Which is very important, especially to young Zimbabweans. Wealth accumulation takes time. Now, I'm 46 years old. Some of you, you want to be like me. I'm 46 years old and you are 20. It has taken me 20 years to be what I am today. Because wealth is accumulated. You build it over time. I made sure that I don't lose what I have accumulated. I built on it. I started with one clinic, then went to one hospital, then went to two. I never closed the other hospitals because I was accumulating. Wealth is accumulated. If you gain wealth very fast, you will probably lose it very fast. And here's the reason why. You don't, you, when you gain it so fast, you have not acquired the wisdom that is needed to keep it. So like a leaking bucket, all the money that you have acquired will start to leak until it reaches the level of money knowledge that you have. So that's why we can give you an okay today. If you've got a tax shop mentality, by the end of the year, you'll be in a corner running a tax shop. You understand what I'm saying? Because you reduce everything to the level of your mind. The reason why I like you to have a perspective and say in the next 10 years, in the next five years, I want to become a millionaire is you then say, what can I do this year? And you build yourself to that level. What can I do next year? And you build upon there. Some of you, in fact, I, 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 I will say this. Most of you, you replace your income. You were doing one thing. Income goes to zero. But what you need to do is you need to have income addition. If you are doing one thing which is already making you money, you don't close it down. Rather get somebody and get 60% of that money, but you've got a trickle coming from there. You've got, instead, of, instead of getting $100 when you're doing it by yourself, you can employ somebody and you get $50 or, or $60, but it's now adding to you plus what you are now doing during you. Most of you, you replace, so you never actually grow on the wealth ladder. Some of us, we add our income. 
So if something new comes today, it's not replacing anything. It's adding on what is already coming. So my income gets higher and higher. Am I talking to somebody? The problem with you is that you think you're the only one who can do what you do. I always tell people that I would rather have 10% of an elephant than 100% of a rat. When I see a entrepreneur saying that, I'll say this is a, a, a foolish entrepreneur. You probably just finished Kuma, Kuma Thousand. You, are, you, are, you, you remind me of the guy who was making shoes under the tree, never went above that because he thought he was the best shoemaker. A pen, a pencil that is sharpened 70% will write just as good as a pencil sharpened 100%. I don't need 100%. I need 70% people who can do the work when I'm not there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I will not drive my own combi because Jukushika Kubir was 15 dollars. I'm a drive out of my son. Whatever, Marie. Fifteen dollars. And then you are stuck there. You cannot do anything else. So I will say, let him take the fifteen dollars. But in Duguanashi, something. And I'm doing something which this guy cannot do. I've added to my income. You see, that's the, the difference between you and me. So now, in my own business, I've got over 250 people working for me. I call that leverage. Other people's time. When I'm sleeping, my hospitals are open in the middle of the night. Other people's time. You are when you other people, you actually you hear what I'm saying? No problem. You must have other people. Am I talking to somebody here? All right. So, wealth is accumulated. Aim to live long. Don't die. One of the causes of poverty in Africa is early death. You should not die before your kids are dead. It is a mistake. They will probably suffer and they have to rise and to be ex exceptional like our advocate here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if they make a mistake, they need somebody to rescue. But if the parent is not there, the mistake will make them. They are gone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you must aim to live long because wealth is accumulated. In fact, most people reach their wealthy place in their 50s. 55 to 65 is the wealthy place. So the early years you learn. So when I was young, I tried many businesses. You can ask my wife. I try, I, at one time, I was running 15 businesses. I was crazy. Dandine, Mabazi, Magaraji, Dita Kromu, Dita Hugu. I was everywhere. But when I became wiser, I used the Pareto principle. Where is my money coming from? Where am I gifted? Where am I graced? I can't be everything to everyone. When I focus, shoo, my wealth short, but because I end wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, the early years you learn, when you're in your 35 and 40, 45, you must, those are your working hard years. From 45 to 50, you are now entering into your wealthy place. 65 and above, you are entering into a legacy place. Yeah, you, yes. Am I talking to somebody? We need the money mindset. And the reason why I'm telling you this now before you have got money is because when money starts to come, you need to plan it and to have the money mindset because you're going to use it and lose it. The next money that comes into your hands, you should use it wisely. You should invest in your business. So every time I get money, I say, what can I do into my business that will give me more money before I eat it? You eat your money. They say, can you get us out? So I can do it. I say, good business. No. The business first. Business what? First. That's how we have become rich. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. All right. So what we're going to do is, guys, come and take this out. We are going to have a question and answer. Can we have a roving mic? And uh, Arthur, you might need the, the other mic that you've got there. Can we, can we have the roving mic, and question and answer. So we're going to take questions first from this audience, 
Then we're going to take questions from the downstairs overflow audience. Everybody's going to get time. And after, if you want uh, photos with Arthur, please just make a queue outside. Don't, and we will be able, you can take your photo with your own. Uh, can you remove this? Can you remove this, guys? Do we have a roving mic in the audience? MC, help, help us. So there'll be a mic. Please, you tell us your name. No preaching. We are out of time. This is almost 20 minutes to 8. So you don't preach. Tell us your, your, your name, the business that you are doing straight to your question. If we feel that you are talking Nyambo or Utara I will cut you because you are holding my mic. Is that okay? <laughs> All right, so let's have three, four questions. You tell us your questions, and then we answer. You, you, you can use that. Can you put the lapel on? Let's move, guys. We don't have all day. Thank you. My question is to you, Dr. Jesus. Please, may you stand so that I can see you. My name is Joseph Musairi. I'm into Fred Ford, but I'm older than you. Uh, my question is, in Zimbabwe, you talked about buckets. The easiest investment option is through cash and the short-term investments. If you remember where we used to have my pubs, Kunana, Bear Valley, Bureau Society, things. But then because of the value of money, which lost value over the years. A lot of people of my age, and probably age as well, they lost their investments through that bucket. I remember a few years ago, you had in a saving, $1,000 was one-to-one -one with the Zimbabwean currency. So it took time for you to save a, a few thousand dollars. And when the Zimbabwean dollar was sort of devalued, you ended up with maybe even less than 10 years. So how would you address that problem in Zimbabwe's situation? Next question, keep them short so that we can have more questions and you can direct them to either one of us. Um, thank, you, thank you very much, my name is Temba. My question is to do with professionals that are entrepreneurs. I've seen a number who start as, as professionals working, then they try entrepreneurship, they get into entrepreneurship, but you then find them going back into formal employment. What's your word of advice to professionals that want to make it big and want to go full-time as entrepreneurs? Thank you. Next question, that's a good question. Um, I think I'll take this. Um, good evening to you all. My name is Tinotina Mkombe. I am 15 years of age. Um, I want to ask, um, like I want to publish my book this year and I want to ask how can I get sponsors, how can I get exposure and you know, how do I get my name out there because I'm quite very young. See, I just want to get my book out there, showcase my talent and show people that no matter how young you are, you can always achieve your goals. So how do I do that? question in this house. Let's go this side. Or maybe just go that side, then we'll come to this side in the second round. Hi, my name is Keith Kamanda. I, I sell gaming accessories. I want to ask, uh, in Zimbabwe, how can we raise capital aside from uh, the traditional things like banks and stuff? How do we raise uh, capital? All right, so we'll answer those uh, questions 
then we'll go to the auditorium downstairs after we have answered these four. So I will tackle the, the first one. Basically, what uh, my elder brother was asking there is, how do you keep value of your money in an unstable economic environment? That, that's basically what he was asking. So what the people of old did not uh, think they put their money in what are called liquid assets instead of putting their money in hard assets. And these hard assets can be divided into uh, uh, gold, diamonds, uh, 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 real estate. So in Zimbabwe, the best way of preserving value is real estate, especially if it has got titled it. You preserve your value no matter which, uh, even if the currency goes to 100,000, that real estate will preserve its currency. Uh, it's, it's, it's money. So the other thing is that most people, when they put money in those uh, 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 institutions, I always say never put a lot of money into an institution or in the things that you don't understand. Because uno farwa. Are you? The one that understands will end up with the money. The one who does not understand will end up having nothing. Yep. So a lot of people, trusted people, and they did not themselves learn. So in this age, what you need to do, go for hard assets, but invest in things that you understand so that you are able to keep track of what is happening. If you had kept that in mind, you will not have lost. So you should not lose again. From, from now, you should not lose. I also lost money because of my age. But I'm, I'm, I'm no longer losing money anymore. In fact, I don't, in fact, the money that I lost made me sharper and know that I never put money into something that I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why one of my biggest uh, bucket is the bucket of real estate. In fact, I make money in my business and invest it in my real estate portfolio. So my real estate portfolio is my real business, but I'm getting money elsewhere and then focus on real estate. Clear? Second question. All right. Um Second question. Can I, let me borrow it, Okay, so the... All right, um, I think let's give a round of applause to the young girl at 15 years. Um, I think one thing that we need to nurture is a culture of writing. It's very important. They often say, until the lion learns how to write, the narrative will always glorify the hunter. So I'll tell you from a personal experience, I discovered when I was grade six that I wanted to write. So I didn't know what to write about, pretty much. So I tried to write a novel. I couldn't do two pages. So I think the bulk of mentorship now comes in handy in terms of what do you actually want to write on. So I'm very happy to take you through that process as well, even after this session. <clears throat> so now I'm on 20 books. Uh, nine of my books have been approved to recommend for use in all schools by the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education. And um, I think many people in universities have actually read my books. Uh, many lawyers have actually used my books for them to go through law school and so forth. So I think what is very key is number one, identify the, the particular genre of your book. What is it that you're writing upon and who is your target market before releasing uh, there's a statement I means my friend has just finished a book on how to make money. Now they are looking for money to publish that book. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I was only book race success, Usna Mario will publish. So I'll, I'll, I'll work with you on that. Then on professionals coming back to employment, uh, one thing that we need to work on is something called the transition. We, we need to plan the exit. So I wonder. When we get inspired, motivated, we usually want to do things quickly, quickly start to think through. So I really want people to be able to actually plan. Right now, before you quit your job, what's your game plan first? Last time, so it's, it's rather better for you to actually be able to say, 
the reason why you actually need to say, I'm now leaving my job, is because you want to release your time. You now want more time so that you can actually grow your, your business. And I'll give you a practical example. Myself, professional, I'm a lawyer. That's what I do, 8 to 5. Don't to represent on town. But if I was someone else, I was going to say, no, I'm going to quit law because I'm good at public speaking. But for me, public speaking is my hobby, but it's also an additional stream. You can start on a dock. You have high skill income. That's very true. Where I'm now monetizing my hobby. So you need to identify what is it that you want to do. Is it something that you can do concurrently with your job? Or is it something that in the long run, you might actually want to say, no, I think I might want to concentrate on that. So I think the key is planning. It will help you. So that so that was also Zoka. Kubasa, what no one did Mistake. All right. I hope I've managed to answer you. All right. All right. Okay. So, so for me, what I always say, uh, just weighing uh, to what Arthur said about professionals. I'm a professional myself. It can't get any higher. I'm a, I'm a GM. You, you understand? And with all the perks that you can think of, I could literally just be that and I'll, I'll be fine. You understand? But I still run my business. Because you also need to know that there's no job security in the corporate. But at the same time, you need the wisdom. So if you are married, I usually say the two of you split, uh, uh, you know, one should be formally employed, one should be in the, should be, uh, in the market, in business. In that way, because sometimes, like I said, business is hard, things don't move all the time. You don't want to jeopardize your family. You, you understand what I'm saying? Number two, you only quit your job when the business has started to give you money equivalent to the money that you are making at your job for more than six months. You don't make a decision over one good month or one big deal. It might be something that is now sustainable and at that point you can say, I'm shifting and focusing on my business. Is that clear? All right. Um, that was the last question on how to raise capital. Now, this is... I have raised, I have raised capital. One of our uh, group of hospitals, the, the mental health ones, we raised capital. We raised over 160,000. I pitched to 25 people, so I needed to know how to pitch. Two, they gave me uh, 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 160,000. Of that 100,000, uh, 60,000 was, was buying an equity part. 100,000 was a loan to the company with a 10% interest per year with a three uh, liquidation period. So when you're talking about raising capital, you now need to have the mindset of, 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 uh, uh, um, of financing businesses. Nobody is going to finance a business which is not dealing. And sometimes entrepreneurs are full of their own idea that they don't see the, 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 the things that are wrong with that idea. We call it the mouse trap syndrome. Where we say, a person, an entrepreneur says, I've created a new mouse trap. When the mice climbs and there's a light that shines, when the, the light shines, it then releases a sound, an infrared which goes and alerts the arrow. The arrow then goes. And you can say, you are thrilling yourself, but it's not thrilling the people with money. So there is no shortage of money in the market there is shortage of good ideas that the market can put money into. So you must first evaluate the quality of your market. So before I put in money in any business, I want to make sure that there is a market and you have proved to be the model that this thing is working. So before those guys did, I started this hospital in Chutungwiza in my own house, and then I, I, I proved, I admitted people, then I said, this place is full, can we, I, I, want, to, I want more beds. So we, they ended up investing until we moved from nine beds to 44 beds, but I had a proof of concept. So don't come to me asking for money, and you've got no proof of concept. 
Don't come for, to me working for money and say, Why don't you go and buy who could the Mazai Kwa 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 Ivins? Then you start pushing a thousand crates and say, If I then produce my own, I already have a market. Don't say, I want to produce a thousand crates and I want to sell them. Show me that you're already selling it before I give you the money. So there is money for your business. All of you, you can get money here in Zimbabwe. But the problem is, your idea is too shallow. And when I was part of the uh, Potras adjudication uh, uh, process, I adjudicated over 1,000 ideas. And when I looked at them, most of them were too shallow. And when we put people to, to, to actually present, they could not present. I then suggested to the director that we need to teach the entrepreneurs how to pitch how to, at what point they need to come and ask for money. Some of you ask money at an idea stage. It's too early. We don't give money at that stage. We give money when I know that my money is safe and I'm ready, so you give me a prototype. All right. So we are going to go to the um, downstairs uh, uh, overflow can we have four questions from the overflow? So, let, 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 let off ours. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Quinton Dongo. I'm a 12 year old and I'm the author of Strive. Um, my question is I know that there are programs being done for the young ones, but I felt there's need for the depth of professionals. So I wanted to know if you have any plans to cascade such programs for the people of my age in the future. Let, let's get four questions from downstairs, then we'll answer. Four questions from, so that's the first question. Those are the only two.
So, so those are good questions from uh, downstairs. Let's put our hands together for downstairs. <laughs> All right, so Arthur, go first, then I'll, I'll, I'll come in. All right, so one, one organization reached out to me last year. He says, I want you to come so that we give you exposure. <laughs> so every month, uh, right now our stats per month, our monthly reach is between 1.5 to 2 million. On, on, on that Facebook page, yeah, that, that's our level of reach. So if you combine it, um, we actually have quite a, a, a serious reach. I don't mind speaking for free, are you with me? But one of the things that I actually believe, if you're good at something, charge. Hello? If you're good at something, G, charge. So, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. My invoice. Secondly, we are not doing this because we want to be out there. We're already out there. No, we're already out there. I'm not sure, sure, like... I'm, I'm, I'm leaving for Victoria Falls on Monday, Tuesday. I'm spending the entire week. I'm fully booked. So I, I just live really out there. But you always need to have the, the wisdom to know where to charge and where not to charge. But that's one of the things. It's a very delicate balance. For certain places, you can charge. Uh, but certain places, you don't necessarily have to charge because of the strategic advantage. So several of my, my assignments that I've managed to receive, I've actually gotten them from places where I did not necessarily charge. Both names are one, two, three, four, five will be there. Are you with me? So I, I think what you need to do, number one, really work on your personal brand, what I was talking about. Um, when I started speaking, someone changed my life. I want four years ago, no, why don't you come and speak? And the question that they asked me is how much do you charge? I didn't know you could actually charge. They changed my life. Are you with me? It changed my life. So let's learn to strike a balance. But most importantly, I think also get a mentor who has been in the field so that you can get to be guided as well. I think that's my question on, uh, on the person who is talking about uh, life, life coaching. Then the other question was on the 12-year-old. How are you? All right. So, you know, I, why I stopped pushing academic books was because of piracy. You know, the guy tests our patients. I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the road. I'm going to go to the spelling. Correct spelling. And price and rucha jaini ni ruto kundwa ni photocopied book. But um, for a good five years or more, I went through the entire provinces, um, working with schools and so forth. But definitely, I think it's something worth doing again. Uh, but this time, really getting to take this. I love what he was talking about on the money mindset. That's like my primary schools and so forth, but something that really needs to be organized. I think it will, it will really, really help. If some of us had managed to get that exposure at an I think, which is also why I think such programs are very, very important. I think that would be my response to you. Doc. All right, so let me respond to the graphic designer who also has got a musical talent. Now, there's a difference between a business and a hobby. That's number one. Number two, we must know what is feeding you. Is it the music or the graphic designing? You understand? Whatever is feeding you and has got the highest, and has got the highest potential, that's what you need to focus on. So, so the other thing that you are really asking the, uh, the graphic designer is that, you are, who told you that time ends at 4, uh, uh, 4 p.m. or at 5, work ends at 5? So I work from 6 or 5, I wake up at 5 and sometimes I sleep at 12 and I'm working. I work on different projects, different businesses. There was a time when we actually used to have business time, uh, uh, meetings that would start at 10 p.m. Ask my wife, she'll tell you. So who told you that you should limit your operations to 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock? So you can do your graphic designing from 8 to 4. Then from 4 to 10, you do your music. Who told you you must do one of the either? You can do both. You understand what I'm saying? 
You can also say that today I'm doing graphic designing, tomorrow I'm doing music. There are so many ways of doing the same things as long as it is giving you. You need to come for our time management course. When do you need to stop a business if it's not working? Most people start a business uh, without adequate investigation. I say before you invest, you must investigate. Some of you have started, you tried going on tour, Butsu, Kumozambiki, Zemabero, Wavoyane, they said they left. Usunga Zodi, Rajo, Ringe, Zogu, right, Zen's room with the other. Oh, Zaganza, Halloween, and you did not. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, what most of us do, we get into business with inadequate preparation and inadequate knowledge. So when we get there, we then get, we really get a shock of our lives and the business fails. So most business fails because of lack of preparation. That's number one. Most business also fail because of lack of mentorship. The purpose of mentors is to help you to see your blind spots. So go into a business, get advice from people who are there and learn. So the most important thing that you need to do, you need to be learning every day. And it's easier now. We have put our material on YouTube, on Facebook. You can go there. There's so much to learn, how to pitch, how to ask money, how to market, how to upscale, how to do this. There is so much there. That's the purpose of wisdom. That's why this church is called Wisdom City. It teaches you the house of life, including business. You understand what I'm saying? So when do you stop a business? Let me give you. When you have put everything, you have learned everything, and it's still failing. At that point, you, you quit. You learn your lessons, dust yourself, and replan uh, uh, the next move. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? All right. For the, for the life coach, I will tell you a business that I did. Um, re, 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 uh, drug rehabilitation, where we are now the biggest drug rehabilitation uh, owners and facilities, and we have done the most patients in Zimbabwe. In fact, I introduced it into Zimbabwe. But my first patient, when we had the first hospital, nobody wanted to come because it was the first, it was a new thing. So I got in a patient who wanted rehab and I gave them for free. So when the second one were coming, I said, I already have a patient. I never told them that the patient was for free. And said, this is what, and in my talk, it was as if this patient had paid the amount that I was now charging. So I started charging from the second because I advertised myself with the first. You understand what I'm saying? I got the value, I leveraged that person. Am, am, am I talking? So sometimes you might want to start, do the pro bono, but that pro bono, do it so well. Get the videos, get the marketing, get the what, go there, look and fly. And then when you put it, you already look like you are an expert and you are big. You understand what I'm saying? Then you start charging big. But nobody, the, the reason why you can't charge is you are not, nobody know, uh, knows you. David was already known that he can play. All right. I, All right, um, just to add on to what Doc was saying, let's not be emotionally attached to my businesses. When I got not go the emotional attachment. Hey, and I got to get If it's not working, it's not working. Are you with me? So, so don't be emotionally attached to what is no longer she, working. So, winners do actually quit. They quit the right things at the right time. So the moment you continue emotional attack, you're going to put in more money, you're sinking further. You're going to put in more time, you're sinking further. You're going to put in more resources, you're sinking further. So we, we need to learn to be less emotional about these things and begin to make my decisions. Mm, I have to go. Do not buy so that you try your luck elsewhere. Do not buy thrash. Well. Doc, thanks. All right. So um, it's now 8 o'clock. We can either close so that you can be on time or we can have the last round of questions from this live audience because you guys came early, so you'll get the second round and we'll close. Is that okay? Okay. So the next uh, round of questions, let's start this side. MC. Let's start. There were questions around here. Let's have two questions from here, one question in the middle and one question on this side. Then we will call it a night. Who is enjoying the program so far? 
if we have another one, would you come? Raise your hand if you would come. If we make you pay, would you come? Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's do quickly and so that we, we, we finish. Okay, um, my name is Desmond Choto. Uh, my question is um, about saving. You talked about uh, the 10% that you're supposed to save. Uh, some, a while ago, there were like uh, things that we could do, maybe old mutual, we did, like small trust accounts where you could put your money into, because really we can't um, maybe go on and invest into real estate now. Uh, what's your advice on how we should save money? Do you think we should put it in a basket, maybe under the pillow or something, or there are other systems that we can take advantage of to actually save our money better? Thank you. Two questions, then we answer. Other people are already leaving so that we don't disturb our recording. Yeah, hello, everyone. My name is Maria, and I, I run a small business. Um, it's a lingerie business for plus-size ladies. So I just wanted to ask about, uh, as a business person, how do you take accountability for your business in terms of um, uh, paying taxes, invoicing your work? As a small business, I, I'm struggling with having knowledge with that. All right. Let's have one question from this end, then we we just take three questions and we finish. This side. Who has got a serious question there? Can you stand? Okay, that's fine. So one serious question from the lady in white and then we close. So while she's going there, during um, February, we will be having some relationship seminars in this place, couple seminars, uh, and single seminars on different days, please just watch our Facebook page. If you are serious, um, and um, we also push it for entrepreneurs because a divorce can destroy your business. So you need to come, where they'll, be for, they'll be free. And there's a Valentine's dinner uh, on the 10th, it's $100 per couple. It's pretty cheap, just, just come. All right, give us the... Hello, Manera Naka. In different pan from Marondra. Uh, we are currently running a business, me and my husband. Uh, so we have been saving and everything has been going well. But now I am struggling because he's talking about going to the bank for an overdraft. So my question is, how do we balance that? And is it wise? While least I'm making my savings and doing what I want to do with those savings, for me to go to the bank and get an overdraft to boost my business. All right, so we want to answer whatever questions. All right, uh, now I'm telling you as a lawyer. As a credit Canada, we need to be very tactical. Uh, I've had the opportunity to defend on honest credit. Um, I've also had the opportunity to go so on and it. The question is, why do you actually want to borrow in the first place? Because if we don't address the reason why, which is pushing us towards borrowing, you know, you're right. So I think we actually need to sit down to a root cause analysis. So that so the problem that we're going through right now, does it actually require us to borrow or to make certain decisions in the organization? Because remember, if you don't address the internal systems, you may not actually have the capacity to pay back the money. And yes, you can be a company, but my banks usually want maturity agreements, which means you are also going to commit at an individual level. And that may actually set your back. So I really think you need to sit down. Move my honest conversations about how you're running the business, where you're going with the financials. Why are we even in this financial mess? Do we even have to be in this financial? What decision do we need to make? What changes do we need to make as a business? That way there's no basta and it helps you make the decision whether or not we actually want to get external money. But that's what I actually think. Um, there was a question elsewhere which was talking about what? Um, my systems. Or as a, as a, as a, as a startup, pretty much, 
Uh, our number is all but my lawyers. Our number is all but uh, G -G -G. But right now, things to do like my taxes, they are more on the secretarial side. So you rather take advantage, number one, of your social network. If you've got people with expertise in those particular areas, you might want to actually take advantage of that relationship that you have. You know, Basra or Gama Gama. Because, for example, um, if you want to engage my proper, proper bigger entities, they might charge you something more which you can't afford. So I really think take advantage of your circle. Then secondly, right now there are several people actually doing this thing on a consultant's basis, part-time basis. It does actually help you. But most importantly, when your business is still small, it's also very important to start putting in systems that then allows your business to actually grow. Because five years from now, we can't be talking about a startup. Business of Kura, I don't know, I'm still starting, I'm still starting. Ten years later, I'm still growing, I'm still growing. No panel is to change. And change actually is a result of the systems and the decisions that we're going to make. That, that's what I would say. So I usually say when you are a small business or a startup, the government will be very is, is a happy when you are actually doing business because at least you've got a job, you are earning something. You understand what I'm saying? But as your business starts to develop, at some point, you cannot continue being underground. You cannot com continue selling things in the boot. You are going to have to formalize. You understand what I'm saying? So, so uh, don't focus on that yet. The good thing is that you are employing one or two people. Continue pushing. The time will come when he, he, the business will put a demand for you to formalize. So don't bog yourself right now and say, I want to formalize, I want to pay my tax. Pay, pay, the fact that you are, you are able to, to pay rent and then pay TT tax and, and sales tax, it's actually good because you are not giving the government a burden to look after you. You understand what I'm saying? But as your business increase, then you need to start to formalize. So that's what I did when I was very small. I never, but when a, a time came when now the business was big, you could not hide it anymore. You have to come out, and at that point, we start paying your taxes, your pay as you earn, and we, we get your tax clearance and all that, and all that, da, 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 da. So everybody needs to pay their taxes. That's how we are paying the police. That's how we are paying people keeping us safe. And so it's important for us to do that. But your business will detect how, the amount, and when that happens, let it not bog you down. Start something, grow it, and then pay your dues. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Okay. All right. There was a question directed to me, then I will ask. Uh, what was the question? I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it. But you know what? You can ask me as a, uh, in person. Please, let's thank uh, uh, Arthur Marara for coming. And give yourself a round of applause for coming as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. See you next time. Watch The Space, Facebook, and uh, we are just here just to help you to succeed. See you next time. God bless you.